Hello, this is the TV enthusiast video coverage of Game of Thrones Season 5. I am your host, Tyson, editor-in-chief of TV Enthusiast. Joining me is Will Rorig from our TV enthusiast side as well. He is our news director. Hello. Today we are going to be talking about the sixth episode of the fifth season of Game of Thrones, which is titled... Unbowed, unbent, unbroken, which is the motto of House uh, Martell. Um, so we got to see a little bit more of Dorne in this episode. Uh, we also got to see uh, uh, some happenings in um, Bravos with Arya. Uh, we got to see uh, uh, a little bit more with Tyrion and um, uh, uh, Jorah. Um, on their way towards uh, Queen Daenerys. And what else do we get to see? We got to see uh, uh, Sansa and Winterfell. And, and uh, in the House of Black and White. Yes, yes, yes. We got to see, yeah, Arya and Bravos with uh, uh, her. She finally got into the room, so we can discuss what was yeah. there. So l let's start. <laughs> Let's start with that. It's kind of uh, disconnected from a lot of the kind of major events that have been going on, so it's a good kind of point because it's interesting, but it's not directly related to all the other connecting stories right now. So Arya is in the House in Black and White, which is uh, uh, where they um, train or, or where they house the, the Faceless Men, which is this group she's trying to become a part of. And she's trying to get into this room where she can get a, a where where they take all of these bodies that she cleans, um, and she doesn't know wh where they're going, what's happening to them, and she's been curious about this for since the last time we saw her, um, and she finally gets to go, and the way she gets there is that she helps uh, kill a little girl who's uh, sick. Um, by giving, by uh, uh, lying to her and convincing her that everything's going to be okay and giving her the poison from the well, that sick girl who's dying, and, uh, you know, takes her. She's cleaning her body like all the others, and then um, Jock and Hagar shows up and opens up the door to the other room, and Arya gets to walk in, and what does she see inside, Well, <laughs> it, It's pretty magnificent. It's like huge, huge room with columns and columns of faces. I'm presuming the faces of, like, the corpses that they bring in there. But it's so eerie and magnificent at the same time. I was yeah. Kind of I was kind of blown away by it. Um. <laughs> you just make columns, and then as it starts to pull in, you're like, oh, wait, there's, like, faces all inside those columns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These are the faces of the dead. <laughs> the the implication made is that because um, uh, uh, Jock and Agar says, you know, Ari, you're not ready to give up everything of who you are, but you're ready to become somebody else. And as they're looking at one of the faces, so this is somehow tied to however the faceless men can change their faces. I'm guessing. Right. Right. <sighs> So, yeah, we, we finally got to see that, and it looks like Arya's going to kind of move forward in her uh, um, <laughs> Faceless Man assassin training, which is exciting. Of course, like the way Arya Star is going, I, I'm not expecting to see her next week. <laughs> well, we probably won't see her until, uh, yeah, after that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a cool little kind of moment, and uh, it's kind of disconnected from the kind of other major events going on in this episode. Yeah, it's not connected to all the other major events. One thing was um, we got to see Jamie Lannister and Bronze attempted rescue of his niece. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got to see the Sand Snakes in action for the first time. Um, they were shut down pretty quick, though, by the, uh, by the Royal Guard there. Yeah, uh, by the uh, the Prince's like personal guard or whatever that was sent to protect um, uh, um, the girl from the Sand Snakes. Yeah, I don't even remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Baratheon. Marcella. Yeah, Marcella, uh, yes. Cersei's daughter. Um, so yeah, it was a, a the one thing. Did you notice in that fight? I think it was Bronn got cut by uh, I think either the spear, or one of the knives, or something. Oh, you're right. They're poison tipped, aren't they? They talked about that before about how they're really into like poison. So I'm kind of like, ooh. I saw that. I was like, oh, this is like a similar to like the Jora scene last week, kind of like that. Like yeah, he's like not that. gone yet, but we're kind of seeing this hint towards you know him being gone. I mean, I don't know. That might not be the case, but it yeah, was a pretty might. pretty noticeable shot. Like they they wanted us to notice that that happened, you know. And it was like it was like they got away with uh, Marcella though. Well, the Sand Snakes took her and ran off. Yeah. So, but but they captured the other sand snakes. They captured, you know, they captured Oberyn's girlfriend who was behind it, and and they captured uh, Bronn and Jamie. <laughs> you now Bron have some Jamie. explaining to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean. Um... It's interesting now we can kind of maybe see kind of the political tensions kind of come to the surface. Um, do you think we're going to be seeing that next episode, or do you think it's going to be kind of like uh, it's been where we get kind of like little breaks from Dorne here and there? <laughs> I think we might see more of Dorne next episode. There wasn't really a lot in this episode. It was just like that small scene. We might get more in-depth in with Dorne next episode, I think. We got to see Bronn singing in this episode, so he finally got to put his uh, pop star chaps to our chops. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. It is. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. Um, I, I was remembering, we had, I, I think we just talked about that last week, didn't we, about how he was a pop star. and. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of funny that like immediately after that, he has a singing scene. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, HBO's watching. They they filmed that in just last minute just to put it in for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's all us, yes. <laughs> it's all us. It's all about us now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was also the trial with uh, Cersei and the, uh, oh, God, the, the priest, uh, the religious order. The High Sparrow. and um, High Sparrow. Yeah, and, and the Tyrell. So, uh, Jamie, or, or not Jamie, uh, Cersei is continuing to play with fire. <laughs> um, she doesn't even know it, but <laughs> she had a little audience with the woman who orchestrated the death of her first son. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> doesn't even know that, and now she's pissing her off. It's like, oh, yeah, you're not really doing your family any favors here, Cersei. <laughs> You're kind of setting up some bad things in your future, I think, so... Oh, very because now she's having... Not only is she having the brother arrested, but she's having Marjorie arrested, too. And this mm -hmm. is definitely not going to stand... I mean, I don't see how this is not going to horribly backfire on her. And the... the um, uh, uh, what, what's her name? The... I think it's Queen of Thorns, they call the one woman, um, the grandmother, uh, basically reiterated an interesting point, which is something that we, um, you know, when you combine it with something that Tywin said, like, last season, uh, Tywin was saying last season that the gold mines at Lannisport for the Lannisters are done. They're empty. And they're kind of yeah. holding on to this illusion of their wealth now. They don't actually have the wealth they used to have. And then you have, um, basically, the Tyrells are, like, the financial backing of the kingdom now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, wow, you know, like, uh, Oleana, I think is her name, the Queen of Thorns, brought that up. Uh, not, not that, you know, that they're the only backing, but just, you know, like, how much they're bringing to the table. Um, wow, yeah, uh, King's Landing's about to become a little destabilized, I think. I don't think Cersei knows what she's doing, really. She like, she's, an, she's an emotional actor. She acts based on her yeah. emotions and her fears and her anger, and 
she's causes problems. We've talked before about how, in a way, she's kind of directly responsible for not only the monster Joffrey became, but his death. And now she seems to be setting up Tommen for his death, you know? It's like, without realizing it, it's it's like her own fear of her family and everything she cares about being taken from her is causing her to basically... It's like a, a self-fulfilled prophecy at this point. Right. And then uh, well, we, we got Littlefinger telling Cersei about Sansa. That was kind of surprising. What do you think his oh, play is there? I don't know what his play is. He's definitely setting up the piece, playing all the pieces against each other. Do yeah. you think he is in favor of Sansa? Do you think that that is still the case? And that this, you know, using this bit of truth is part of his strategy? Or do you think that he's just like, doesn't give a shit, Sansa's just another piece in the in the large chess it's, game? It's hard to sell. I, I think Sansa's another piece in his chess game. Whatever game he's playing... It's it's pretty crazy because like that it kind of was played off as like the one kind of thing you knew for sure about Littlefinger was that he cared for um, Catelyn Stark and that you know he sees a lot of Catelyn in Sansa you know and, and so he had this kind of connection through that but as it's going on it just kind of seems more and more like his reckless actions is directly what led to her death to you know the downfall of the Starks to all the stuff going on most of the major political catastrophes happening in Westeros are almost directly attributed to his initial actions. Yep. <laughs> and uh, um, on top of all of that now, it, it just seems like, you know, he's playing this card. Like, it seemed before, like, yeah, Catelyn was the one thing he cared about, but now it almost seems like his caring about that is just another one of his pieces to play, so. Right. So uh, um, now he's got the veil. He wants to be the Warden of the North. Um, let's talk about Sansa. Um, she had a, a rather unpleasant ex time. Uh, yeah. Finally well, had her wedding. She married a Bolton. <laughs> she mar um, married to Ramsay, the, the penis cutter. Um, <laughs> that should be his official title. Ramsay, the penis cutter, Bolton. <laughs> um, this is like the big controversy of the episode it's like I think I read an article IGN said has this big headline did Game of Thrones go too far and that was like, like last season with the whole Jamie yeah, um, Thirsty yeah. theme yeah, it's like I don't it, think so at all because I think this is yeah, who like, Ramsey is yeah this is who I, I don't think it did because this is Game of Thrones we are dealing with horrible, awful people who are going to do horrible, awful things. And this isn't like, I mean, I think last season's um, um, the controversy was, was more debatable because Jamie has been kind of recently more portrayed as a likable character. Right. And for that, right. it kind of makes more sense. But Ramsey's never been portrayed as anything but like an absolute horrible monster. Right. <laughs> we, we were never like, supposed to like Ramsey's in the first place. Yeah, he you has know? no redeeming qualities. Yeah, so like, <laughs> seeing Ramsey do this to Sansa, you know, wasn't like anything unexpected or like you weren't like supposed to say, whoa, wow, wow, could, how could he do that? It's like, that's what, exactly what you expected. Yeah. Right. I mean... So in, in the books, this is something that um, I've come to know of, even though I haven't read this far in the books. Um, this is like a whole other thing. Um, I found out a little bit more recently on it, which is that um, I thought it was this girlfriend of Ramsay Snow that they were passing off as Arya Stark and Sansa had, wasn't even there at all. But I found out more recently, it's actually, it's not um, a girlfriend of Ramsay Stark. It was uh, um, Jane Poole who was... Uh, Sansa's friend that came down to I think came down to King's Landing with her in the first season. Okay. Um, the one that was also held hostage when Sansa was held hostage that she wasn't allowed to see. Right. I believe that's who it is, and it's it's her who uh, um they got married off to Bolton and stuff, and Sansa was still in the veil with Littlefinger, and neither of them left. So this is one of the major departures of the series from the um 
from the books to the show. Right. I think it's kind of more interesting because, I mean, we don't really know anything about Jane Poole, so her, like, tragedy is kind of, it would just be, like, a whole new thing they'd have to introduce to us. And it sounds like nothing at all was going on with Sansa and Littlefinger, so, you know, it's like we have to have something going on with them, and so this is much more interesting than them hanging out in the Vale. So, <laughs> just <Yeah>. sitting there. <laughs> what are they yeah, going to do? They just cut back to them, and they're just, like, hanging out there? Like, hey, what's up? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, We're in the Vale. Okay. The Vale, the Vale, the Vale. So, yeah, <laughs> a lot more interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's directly more interesting. It, it makes sense, I think, to the story. So, I mean, having not read this part of the book, so I've only read well, up to parts that the series has already directly covered. Um, if Sansa was in the veil with Littlefinger, the scene earlier with Littlefinger and Cersei can have happened. Because mm-hmm. Littlefinger isn't going to go up to Cersei and say, oh, well, Sansa's in the veil. Yeah, I'm protecting her. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but you control the veil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, um. So like a lot of the kind of machinations that are going on wouldn't make as much sense. So this is kind of something I've been hearing actually. It's kind of a, a positive thing I've been hearing from a lot of actual fans of the books that say that the fourth and fifth books, which are what this season is largely based on. Um, are like the worst books in the series. <laughs> and they're, they're slow and they're nothing, not much really happens and stuff. And so it seems like a lot of fans of the books are actually kind of excited about the direction that the series has taken by changing it. Um, right. So it's kind of weird because before you had all the fear about you know the show catching up and changes it was going to make, and now they seem really relieved. <laughs> Makes sense that the changes that they're making in the show are to speed up the pace because it is like a 10 episode program that airs what you know once a year every year. They yeah. can't afford to have that kind of glacial pace that the books seem to have taken on. Yeah. Yep. So, um, it's uh, um, that's that's the kind of the big change this season more than anything else I think is this kind of what's going on with that. Let's talk about um, let's go outside of Winterfell and talk about uh, what's been going on in uh, uh, across the Narrow Sea with Tyrion and uh, Jorah. So oh, yeah. we know last episode that um, Jorah now has grayscale. And so he's basically doomed to become one of those stone men, um, as far as we know. You know, it's 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 called dragon scale or something. So maybe there's some kind of connection to um, Daenerys and and um, her dragons and stuff. Or maybe there is a way to kind of reverse it based on that. But we don't know anything about that. All anybody knows about dragon scale is that you basically become like a mindless. A, um, stone man that attacks everything, you know, <laughs> and is highly contagious. Um, well, we know there's a way to stop it. Yes, we know that uh, um, you can stop but not reverse it because um, Stannis, his daughter, um, is living with uh, um, grayscale on her face, so. Right, Absolutely. But we don't know, I mean, it's not a widely um, publicized means of stopping it. It seems like we were theorizing last week that it's it's likely due to um, the Red Witch and uh, the Lord yeah. of Light and all of that kind of magic going on, that that's directly what's attributed to it. And we know that there is a priestess of the Lord of Light that was... Um, uh, um, hailing uh, uh, Daenerys, you know, and, and praising her and stuff. So we know that it's not impossible um, for uh, one of the servants of the Lord of Light to be directly tied in with um, Daenerys and what's going on over there, and that could directly reach Jorah and potentially save him. Right. But for now, Jorah and Tyrion have been kidnapped by slavers. And Including Mr. Stolen. Echo. <laughs> yeah, it makes, yeah, I know. I saw it, Mr. Echo. Uh, <laughs> um, and... Tyrion has set up to where Jorah is this badass fighter and to where they're going to take him to the fighting pits in Marine, you know, 
so Tyrion really because, turned that situation around for them with mm-hmm. his quick thinking and his wits, which is he's really good at. If they were going to chop off Tyrion's member and sell it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, 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 kind of a funny scene when uh, he said, how will they know it's from a, a midget and, or a dwarf unless you uh, present the dwarf to him? And they said, it'll be a dwarf-sized dick. And he said, think again. Yeah, think again. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty funny. And... Uh, um, yeah, so we have this kind of uh, this going on. It, it it seemed like oh another thing getting in the way of them eventually reaching Daenerys, but now it seems like they almost have an express um, trip to Daenerys because they're taking yeah, them exactly. right to the fighting pits. They're taking them right to Marine. That's gonna be interesting. So next week is episode seven. Do you think we're gonna <laughs> they're gonna be in Marine by episode seven, or do you think we're gonna this is gonna no. be like an episode nine kind of thing? Ship will crash and they'll end up sunlight. <laughs> It'll be a hurricane. <laughs> I'll have to wait. <laughs> I think the thing with Tyrion is people expect, because people love Tyrion so much, people expect George R. R. Martin to kill him off at some point. But what I've noticed over the course of these seasons is George R. R. Martin is having so much fun just torturing the hell out of this dwarf that he can't kill him because yeah. he's been throwing so Tyrion's been through so much and he just keeps going through so much <laughs> every season. Yeah, every season it's like, come on, he, he can't, can't kill him. He hasn't <laughs> suffered enough. <laughs> he hasn't suffered enough, exactly. So, um, what's interesting here as well is that. Um, when Daenerys decided to reopen the fighting pits in the last episode, the condition was that it was going to be um, only free men that could fight in it. And then the slavers now, they say, they're reopening the fighting pit, and I don't know anybody but slaves that would fight in this. And so they're bringing them as slaves to fight in the fighting pit, even though Daenerys said it's only free men, which is kind of going to implying that there's some deception going on towards what Daenerys sees is going on and what actually is. Right. That they're passing off slavery, um, probably with threats and <laughs> uh, to the slaves to imply that they're free men when they aren't. Secret slaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, secret slaves. Uh, so yeah, it implies that there are going to be slaves in the fighting pits. Daenerys isn't going to know that they're slaves. Um, yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, because I'm sure like she's going to find out real quick. Well, if Jorah shows up in the fighting pits and she's there... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Then she's going to know something's up. You know, whether or not she realizes, she might think she could not, not know he's a slave, she might think he's something else, but... I think that that's going to come out, and that's going to be a cause of some strife. Um, and perhaps will come out with the Sons of the Harpy. There is a, there's a scene in the trailer that we still haven't seen yet with the fighting pits, and you see it looks like a bunch of people in masks on the floor of the fighting pits. Oh, yeah. So, um, of Jorah in the fighting pits. Yeah, so now we kind of know how Jorah gets there, and we know that there's men in masks that show up there. Um, we don't really kind of know everything that's going on with that, but we know what those men in the mask are. Those are the sons of the harpy, because we've seen that. Um, so we kind of have to see how it plays up to that, like what causes that, why we see it like that, you know. Um, we have to see the kind of the, the last piece of that puzzle to kind of fall in place. <laughs> um yep. And that's kind of, I think, the last thing from the trailer that we have yet to see. Everything else I think we've seen from the trailer, so we're kind of in new territory now. Um, yeah, we, we knew that Tyrion was going to kind of have some encounter with a dragon or see a dragon or something because of the way the poster was set up. We knew that, uh, you know, a lot of these kind of things we, we could seen kind of footage of in the trailers and stuff, but this is kind of like the last thing, the thing we haven't seen yet, so... Um, I'm imagining that's going to be a big event, maybe like an episode 9 kind of thing. Who knows? Uh, I could totally see in the next episode 
maybe they arrive in Marine and then episode eight, you know, the fighting pits open and episode nine we have that scene or something. I keep just imagining it's going to be an episode nine scene just because it's going to be like some big scene, you know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> but, to be honest, I have no idea where the season is going still or even what the big moment's going to be. Um, it's interesting, you know. I'm excited to see um, um, Arya now. I haven't really been... I was really excited to see where her story was going to be at the beginning of the season. Haven't really been blown away by anything going on in her story yet, you know, yeah. so far. Yeah. But now um, uh, uh, Jockin said, uh, you're ready to become somebody else. And, and that excites me. Because this is going to be like her chance to really kind of learn some aspect of, you know, how to be a faceless man. Definitely. I agree. So what else happened? Is there anything that we missed this episode? I'm kind of going to go over our list right here and see. Think of anything. Oh, we didn't talk about... Um, oh, we talked... A, yeah, we did talk a little bit about... Um, the trial in King's Landing. We didn't. We, we kind of went yeah. off topic and we're talking about Cersei. We didn't actually talk about um, the actual events of the trial, which is that um, uh, Loras's uh, um, Sir Loras's uh, boy toy that we saw before with uh, uh, in a scene where he was with um, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah Loras and the, and him and the Queen were all in the room together. And he was talking about how Loras has a birthmark in the shape of Dorn. That actually yeah. came into play. It wasn't just a little character moment scene. It actually came into play because uh, um, we got a scene where he was brought in in the trial to basically refute um, Loras and um, Marjorie's claims that Loras wasn't gay and uh, use that as evidence against them. And that's basically put both Loris and Marjorie under arrest now. Yep, that's what did it, uh, was that testimony. And they had that, I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, because if they sat there and thought about it for even a minute, you would kind of figure, you know, that they had that, they had that ace up their sleeve, you know. They had him dead... Loras dead to rights. And I guess mm -hmm. they were thinking that they didn't really know about that. Yeah. I don't think Loras expected that that, that that guy would betray him and, and uh, do that. He seemed kind of cocky the way he was betraying him. It wasn't like he was scared and had been, you know, beaten or something like that. He kind of just came out and was like, yeah, I know him. I slept with him. He has a birthmark, you know? <laughs> So that makes me think that he's somehow connected to um, Cersei in part of the right. scheme. But if the faith militant doesn't care about politics and they only care about, you know, these kind of virtues and, you know, getting people for those crimes, then aren't they going to be going after that guy just the same? Right, you would think. So I mean, he, he should be worried unless they, like, Gave him some kind of idea like, oh, you'll be fine if you just give up Loras, you know. I think we're still him. waiting for the other shoe to drop on the Faith Militant and, and their purpose and the story right now. I think, yeah, the, I think we're still waiting for the other shoe to drop. I think Cer I think it's a situation Cersei thinks she has it under control. I think Cersei believes that they're working for her. That they're her pawns, yeah. That they're her pawns, when in reality they're not. And then she's going to find that out because they're going to do something that she is not going to like. And it's going to backfire big time. I'm still waiting for that to backfire on her. And it so, will. Speaking of pawns, Cersei's pawns, um, you know what we haven't seen in quite a while is uh, uh, Cersei's new uh, Master of Whispers. Um who's uh, the, the mad scientist who's experimenting on the mountain and the dwarf's head. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't seen, seen him in a while, that. and it seems kind of almost ominous because they were bringing up kind of clues about what he was doing or little kind of things about how he was taking the dwarf's head, and they kind of introduced him like he was going to be this new player, and then we kind of haven't seen much of him since. I don't um, know if he's going to be a major player or if he was just like... 
there for you know for for color for some mm-hmm. added color. See, I think that that could be the case, except that I don't think Game of Thrones does that too much. Like they did, you know, the scene with uh, Loras and Marjorie and, and uh, the male prostitute. That ended up actually becoming part of this trial, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, it, could be, it could be part of something. I'm not sure. If it is, I'm not sure what that plays into exactly, though. Do you think we have some kind of a Frankenstein situation coming this uh, season, or? <laughs> yeah, he's going to resurrect Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> the evil, the evil zombie king will rule. I, I'd be, I, I, I'd be happy to see Joffrey come back just so we could see him get killed again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, but he is kind of experimenting. The the last time we saw him, I think, he was in his lab, and he had, like, the, the body of the mountain laid out on a table, and it was, like, jerking, like it was still moving or something. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I got to wonder, this is, you know, Cersei's planning on having some super soldier, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, villain, you know, uh, henchman for her, you know, I don't know, but... That pretty much covers what we've talked about, um, or what we've seen for this last episode um, of Game of Thrones. Do you have anything, what are you anticipating for the next episode? What do you think is going to be the kind of focus? Dorn. Dorn? I think we're headed for a big Dorn episode. Dornish politics? Dornish politics, Dornish anything. I mean, we every time Dorn comes up... In the season, it's been hyped as like a big part of the season. Mm-hmm. But every time it's come up in the season, it's like for like a little, like a small scene in each episode. It's like it's not given as much time as some of the other storylines that we've been seeing. And I think, I I think it's about time it starts coming more to the fore. So mm-hmm. I'm. Like, I'm expecting a bigger focus next episode, especially with Jamie Lannister being captured and, you know, the whole deal with Marcella. I'm looking on uh, Wikipedia on the um, the episode kind of guide stuff, and it just kind of shows who wrote and directed each episode and the title of the episodes as they're coming up. Um, the next episode is titled The Gift, and this one is directly written by... Um, the showrunners, um, David Benioff and D.B. Wise. Um, and so the last one they did this season was episode three, High Sparrow. So this is their next one, their next two, I guess, is seven and eight. And it's called The Gift. Now, I'm not sure what The Gift is is uh, connected to, but I do know, I believe there is a section of land that belongs to the Night's Watch that's called The Gift. Um, I have a few Game of Thrones maps hanging in my wall, and I think there's a section beneath the wall called The Gift um, that belongs to the Night's Watch. So, who knows? Uh, we, we didn't see the Night's Watch this uh, episode, and we know that Stannis is marching towards Winterfell, and which means yeah, he's yeah. the wall, which means that he'd be passing through The Gift so I think we might be getting some uh, um, Stannis action, some uh, some some friendly fatherly robot action. <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah, there was also I forgot there was also the small scene with uh, Tyrion and uh, where? Geez, oh, Tyrion and Jorah where he told Jorah about his father. Yep, where he told Jorah about his father. Yeah, that was a good scene. That was definitely a good scene. Um, Jorah, Jorah didn't even know his father was dead. Tyrion was like, oh, well, you know. He's like, oh, wait, you didn't know. And yeah. That was that was kind of a cool scene. I, I like these little kind of scenes we have throughout um, this season. And just it's like a kind of a trademark of Game of Thrones. We have these little conversations that are really interesting between characters. I mean, um, I think it was in the last episode we had a cool kind of conversation between Stannis and, and uh, Samwell. Um, 
And then, of course, we had the Stannis father-daughter <laughs> hug time scene. <laughs> um, I love these little kind of character moments, you know? So it's co cool to see stuff like that. Especially when you see things like characters learning information from other characters that were not part of their storyline before. Like with Jorah right. and Tyrion now, you know? Right. Those are two um, separate parts of the story that have come together, and it's new really cool. characters interacting with each other. Totally. Yeah. I really, I really, I really enjoy that. Uh, so this was, that was a cool scene. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, next week we're definitely getting more with the Night's Watch, because we didn't get any Night's Watch this episode. Um... The you know uh, Jon Snow has a big decision ahead of him, which is you know where to stay with the Night's Watch or to get himself involved. In well, he's fight. heading off with Stannis' ships to go north of the Wall. Oh yeah, because he's gonna recruit the uh, Wildlings. Yeah, yeah, and then Stannis yeah. is marching south towards Winterfell. Yeah. We haven't seen anything this season yet with the White Walkers. There's been nothing about... So I'm wondering if we're going to get anything about the White Walkers this season. We, we could. Um, he is going north of the Wall, so we might get... If, not, we actually, if we don't actually see them, we might be hearing stuff about what's been going on. Yeah, because, um, yeah. I mean, they teased, like... Ever since, like, they had that scene with, like, the baby, and it's like, oh, what's going on there? And they haven't really followed up with that at all since, you know. Yeah. It would be cool to kind of see some more on that. I don't know, like, it just, they haven't touched on anything with that this season. They've just kind of referenced that they know it's coming. Right. It's kind of like, did you ever see that episode of South Park, um, or the episodes of South Park about Game of Thrones? Yeah, yeah. The Where they go to like, George R. Martin's house, he's all, they're coming, they're coming, don't worry, the dragons are coming. You know? <laughs> yeah. More so than with the dragons, I feel like that with the White Walkers. Like, they're coming, yeah, don't worry. Like, he's like, invited, he invited them into his house. He's like, oh, I or I'll order you pizzas. It's like <laughs> five hours later, he's like, where's the pizza? Oh, they're coming, they're coming. <laughs> the pizzas are coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about the White Walkers right now. It's like, they're coming, we saw that huge <laughs> army, and then it's like, well, they're just kind of... It's like they they made a big test march, and then they said, oh, let's, let's hang out for a few days. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's just chill here. We're such an imposing <laughs> force, they're moving pretty slowly. <laughs> Zombies are slow. Yeah, that's or, true. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're shuffling pretty slowly. <laughs> yeah, shambling pretty slowly. <laughs> so that will bring us to an end of our discussion this week. So, uh, yeah, um, leave comments on our YouTube video. Our site seems to be down right now, but when it's back up, it is tventhusiast.com. Uh, you can check out any of our articles or any of our impressions for stuff coming up. I know we're going to be writing some impressions about uh, Arrow and Flash because uh, Arrow just had its season finale. Flash is having its season finale this week. And that's something we're going to be talking about. It's one of our main shows of discussion. Uh, if the site is still down, if we're still experiencing trouble, maybe we'll do some kind of a Google Hangouts thing with... Uh, um, Will, Cat and I, um, like we did with the MCU talk. Yeah, that'd be cool. Maybe that'll be our first uh, DC TVU talk that we <laughs> talked about. Uh, I mean, yes. <laughs> on our last we podcast. We do a DC TVU talk. Especially <laughs> since it's... DC seems to be... They seem to be making like a little DC universe on television. Yeah. Which is really cool. So in the meantime, uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at Tyson Gifford. Uh, Will, what's your Twitter again? Voxel Hero. At Voxel Hero. Um, so yeah, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, I'm not too active personally, but uh, I, I posted a few things. I'm going to be posting a little bit about, I think, uh, uh, Mr. Robot, which I got a chance to watch the pilot for, and it's pretty exciting. Um, that's going to be made available. We'll have some more coverage on that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Check out tventhusiast.com if the site is up. <laughs> uh, talk to you later. Bye. Bye.